Bruchem Aboyim. Thank you very much for coming. Let me welcome you again to our house, and uh, which become the new normal. This week on the topic for my thoughts, um, the topic will be marriage versus the virus. You know, I had mentioned that I wasn't going to give any more thoughts on the coronavirus. But after seven weeks of quarantine, I see that nothing is an accident. And there are many lessons that we still need to learn or just reinforce, uh, again, th that uh, but we to really relook our values and our relationships. I think that we all have to ask ourselves one question. Has the coronavirus infected my marriage? Rabbi Kiva said that the most important verse in the Torah is V'yahavta l'reyacho kamoko, which means love your friend as you love yourself. Who is this friend that he is referring to? In addition, if this person is your friend, then you should already, there should already exist a feeling of love between the two of you. Friends are generally people with whom we have something in common with. For the most part, you have accepted them as they are, and they have accepted you as well. So, really, who is the Torah referring to when it mentions Reacha, your friend? Well, when one looks at their family closely, one fact sticks out more than any other. You are related to every person in your family by birth, the same family tree, except for your spouse. The one person that is chosen by you, someone who doesn't carry all that family baggage with them, which you found as a soulmate, a safe port in the sea of life, hopefully a true partner in life. In the blessings of the marriage ceremony, the bride and groom are called Reim Ha'ahuvim, those loving friends. Sounds romantic, <laughs> but let's look at the reality of life. Marriage in the best of times is what I call a masterpiece in progress. People most often marry someone who is different than they are. I often wondered why God orchestrated the world so that A's would marry B's. I thought he did it so that he could watch from heaven, so to speak, all in the family. A comedic sitcom about a married couple, two completely different people trying to navigate through the challenges of life, which was very funny. In no universe or time do opposites attract. Uh, sure, you can admire someone who has talents that you don't possess, but Living your life with someone who sees everything different than you do, that's a challenge. So the question becomes, what is it that God wants from us? The answer is to grow. To not be an A or a B, but to somehow learn and grow from each other. To become a much better C. The best of both of you. And this may be why the first commandment in the Torah is peru revu. A person should be fruitful and multiply. Marriage. The only way to be successful in marriage is by learning the art of compromise. You know, a while ago I went to a Sheva Brachas, a meal that is celebrated with the newlywed couple during the first week of their marriage. And it's customary for people to say kind words and give advice to the new couple. One person gave a long speech on marital happiness and finally, <laughs> finally ended with a question to the young couple. He turned to the groom and he said, would you rather be right or happy? And the groom, sure that he had the right answer, answered quickly and with a big smile on his face. He said, happy. And the man smiled. Got exactly what he wanted. Then he turned to the bride and asked her the exact same question. Would you rather be right or happy? And he was certain as to what her answer would be, especially after his long talk about marital happiness. <laughs> but he really knew nothing about relationships. You see, she answered quickly and with no hesitation, right. How many of us have just cruised through our marriages, <clears throat> taking the most important relationship in our lives for granted? We many times put 
ourselves on cruise control and let the relationship drive itself. That may actually work for a while as long as the road is straight, no problems. However, when we have to go through those winding curves in life, we have to take hold of the wheel, concentrate, steer. Remember that the verse about loving your friend, <clears throat> meaning your spouse as yourself, ends with the word kamocha, which translates to mean like yourself. Now, you love yourself, <laughs> even though you really are not perfect. Extend that same yardstick to your spouse. Love her, even with her imperfections. As it says, Isha gagufo dummy. And a man's wife is like his own body. A quote from the Gemara, the Talmud, in Menachos, Sadiq Gimel. <laughs> I always think the word dummy fits right well, very well into the saying. You know, I was at a family dinner, and I not noticed that one of my sisters had a drinker. And it looked similar to one that I had just recently bought. I asked her how she liked it. Oh, she raved about it. She said that one nice feature about the drinker was it didn't leak. I smiled and I said, no, it leaks. She insisted that it was perfect. I told her to turn it upside down. <laughs> it leaked like a sieve. Many times we think that something is complete. It's perfect. But then when we put it under pressure, it leaks like a sieve. Marriage is much like that container. It may seem to be working under normal circumstances, but when pressure is put on the relationship, then all the cracks become evident. With this pandemic, we have been forced to spend more time with our spouses, and those differences that seemed so small and inconsequential before, now, somehow those little mounds may seem like mountains. You know, there are many people who have spent more time with their spouses during the last eight weeks than they may have spent in the last eight years. God has forced us to go back to basics and connect with our other half. Hopefully, this pandemic will help us to fix many of those cracks that have developed over the years. Cracks that we either didn't have the time to fix or that we didn't even realize existed. <clears throat> we are now in a world where we have been forced to employ what they call social distancing. At first, this seems to be a negative. You know, but on a religious level, it can be compared to the menstruant woman who is commanded by the Torah to follow certain social distancing from her husband during the time of her menstruation. Now, this separation is only physical. The objective being to create a much deeper relationship during your separation based on true Torah values. Treating your spouse as a special, per the special person that they are, a true gift from God, someone to love and to cherish. This monthly separation forces us to deal with each other on the level of human beings instead of animals. God does not want us to take our spouses for granted. The monthly separation helps us to appreciate our spouses and our relationship with them on a much higher level, both physically and spiritually. As we know, sometimes less may be more. This timeout has given us an opportunity to relook our marriages, to take the time to acknowledge and compliment all that our spouses add to our lives. You know, our spouse was handpicked for us by God Almighty himself. It was not an accident or a matter of chance. If we can use this opportunity properly, it will benefit us and our children, not just now, but for the rest of our lives. Take a minute and look closely at all that your spouse does for you and all that they add to your life. Do we really thank them enough or do we just take for granted the fact that they fulfill their mission with little praise or fanfare? They may make it seem easy, huh? but you can be sure that it's not. 
But we think, of course they know that I appreciate all that they do and that I love them dearly. But do we really say the words out loud? Thank you. Or I love you. Who doesn't want to be thanked or appreciated? It makes all of us feel better. Acknowledge their contributions to your marriage. Tell them all those compliments that you may have meant to say, but life has just been too hectic to speak the words out loud. Well, now you are quarantined together. And guess what? Now you have the time. Use it wisely. This is a special moment in time. It may never happen again. This is also a time of fear and trepidation. Fear of contracting the virus. Worrying about family, our elderly parents, our jobs, our businesses, money, our connection to our friends and our concerns for them. Of course, our children and their education. And then there is our relationship with God Almighty. After all, how are we supposed to connect with him without synagogues and study halls? Sharing those feelings with someone that you love automatically makes things better. You should be each other's strength. Think of where we come from. Our grandparents, Abraham, the paragon of kindness, and Yitzchak, our father, the first child born as a Jew, who was given the name Yitzchak, which means laughter. Yet he was the paragon of discipline. Then came Yaakov, our father, a name <clears throat> that connects with the word Akev, the heel, a sign of humility. When we take all of these traits together, kindness, laughter, discipline, humility, what we have is Yisroel, the second name given to Yaakov, Jacob, by God Almighty, which translates to mean one who is straight with God. With these genes in our collective DNA, we have the ability and the responsibility to not only survive any catastrophe, but to actually grow from the experience. You know, when God finished creating the world, he said in this portion of Bereshit, chapter 1, verse 31, Vine tov ma'od, and behold, it was very good. And this was referring to all that he had created in the previous six days. Now, the first time that God uses a negative term in creation was with the words lo tov, meaning not good, in verse 2, pardon me, chapter 2, verse number 18, in the portion of Bereshit. When he said, lo tov hayos ha'adam levado, easelo ezer konegdo, which means it is not good for a man to be alone. I will make a compatible helper for him. A spouse. A spouse is a gift from a benevolent creator to help man reach his true potential, a helpmate. It is God's hope, as it states at the end of the chapter, chapter 2, verse 24, the Davik Beishto Vahoya Levasar Echon, that man should be united with his wife, and they shall become one flesh. The verse that tells us about God's special gift to man in chapter 2, verse number 18. Now, it's interesting, our numbers are never by accident. So two alludes to husband and wife. And 18 is the numerical value of the word. Chai, meaning life. This is an allusion to the benefits of sharing one's life with a very special person. A true life. Then in chapter 4, verse 25, it states, Vieda Adam od es ishto. And Adam knew his wife again. Now, this is a euphemism for marital intimacy. However, this verse can also be interpreted on a personal level. That he now tried to understand her, Yeda, know her personality. They have been separated from years, some say 130 years. But now they were reunited. He realized that it was essential, if their relationship was to succeed, for him to take the time to get to know her her likes, her dislikes, what made her laugh, what made her cry, 
her emotions. He tried to understand her on a much deeper level than he had previously. He no longer took her for granted. They, they now truly became what God intended, one flesh. God has put two imperfect individuals on this earth to join together and be partners with him. It is his hope that they connect and blend, becoming one entity with greater strength and character than either could attain separately. We need to learn patience. We need to learn to listen to each other. You know, the word silent and the word listen have exactly the same letters in English. Sometimes it takes, all it takes, is a sympathetic ear, a loving gaze, a simple touch. A smile that says, I understand, I care. You know, there's a story told about a king who commissioned an artist to paint a portrait of true love and happiness. And the king gave the artist six months to come up with the portrait, the painting. And after much thought and searching, the artist finally found exactly what he wanted to paint that would express the feelings that the king wanted to see on canvas. And on the day, everyone came in the great hall. The portrait was covered and the king nodded to the artist and he revealed the painting. And the king looked at it, smiled and nodded his appreciation and agreement. And the picture was of two old people, a man and a wife, sitting on a park bench, holding hands, looking at each other with a smiling gaze. Love in a marriage is not born, it's earned. It is the culmination of all the laughter and tears that a couple share together. If you want to make steel strong, you raise the temperature. The higher the temperature, the stronger the steel. Tough times should bring spouses closer, not farther apart. The Torah and its commandments help us to reach that goal and to keep our relationships alive and vibrant. Our spouse is the only person that allows us to fulfill the mitzvah, the commandment of gemilat chasadim, extending kindness to another individual. You know, whenever we extend a kindness to another person, we may feel good, even righteous. But the person who we've helped, who receives the kindness, may feel a certain sadness and embarrassment that they had to reach out to someone else for their assistance. However, when we express kindness to a spouse, <laughs> they feel they deserve it all, that everything that was given to them. Absolutely no guilt. So it is a true act of kindness with absolutely no negativity. It's also interesting that the numerical values of the words chassan and kala, groom and a bride, have the same numerical value as the word chesed and emes, kindness and truth, 519. 519 just happens to be the same numerical value as the words heim matzu chen v'ene Hashem v'adam that they found favor in the eyes of God and man. Every relationship, I repeat, every relation has its challenges, but they should be kept private, especially from one's children. They are watching us all the time, and even more so now, during difficult times. We teach them more by what we do than by what we say. This pandemic is an opportunity to show them our best side, though it may be challenging at times. I think that sometimes it's easier to be strong for someone else than it is for yourself. Focusing on others will help us all get through this difficult time. As the saying goes, fake it until you make it. As difficult as it may, as it may be at times, be nice. Hopefully this experience will make all of our marriages stronger happier, and more loving than they were before this pandemic. We must always remember that communication is the key to a good marriage. Talk to each other. Be each other's advocate. Always remember that you were chosen by each other. And even more important, you were chosen by God Almighty himself. Now it is your choice 
to find happiness together. Be more than lovers, be friends. And with our efforts toward the concept of avas chinam, of baseless love, may we usher in the coming of Mashiach Tzikenu quickly and in our time. Thank you.